Hey guys, so my project is on neighborhood influences on youth and crime. So here we go. So youth violence is a particular concern for low income minority communities where poverty, family instability and unemployment provide fertile context for gains and illicit drug use. Um, so to go add on youth homicides and non-fatal physical assault related injuries resulted in more than 200 billion dollars annually in combined medical and lost productivity cost alone, not including costs associated with the criminal justice system, psychological and social consequences for victims, perpetrators, their families, or costs incurred by communities. Lastly, use violence is the intentional use of physical force or power of or to threaten or harm others by young people that are ages 10 to 24. Social disorganization um, was brought up and what it means is it is the inability of a community structure to realize the common values of its residents and maintain effective social order. So in a case study, according to Shaw and McKay, weak neighborhood structural factors concentrated poverty, re residential mobility, and racial ethnic are linked to higher rates of juvenile delinquency because they lead to social disorganization. Causes of youth violence are media influence, community and neighborhoods, domestic violence and child abuse, insufficient parent, uh, parental supervision, peer pressure, drug and, drugs and alcohol, traumatic events, and mental illness as well. So basically, whatever you're around, um, that also adds on to the low income families as well. Some of the statistics that we can look at. In 2018, there were about 192,000 serious violent crimes committed by youth between the age of 12 and 17 in the United States. Um, according to the most recent data, m most criminal justice criminal use in the United States were arrested for armed robbery or aggravated assault. Um, another thing to add on too is that two young people who live in the same neighborhood um, are six times more likely to be arrested than if they go to the same school as opposed to different schools. Um, another statistic that I found was that um, there was a study conducted by Richard Florida, and he found that more than a quarter, or 28%, of crimes committed by people are between the ages of 16 or 21 are committed in teams. So, um, homicide is also the third leading cause of death of young people between 10 and 24. Um, each day, about 13 young people are victims of homicide, and about 1,100 are treated in emergency departments for non-fatal assault-related injuries. Um, a case study. There's multiple case studies that I did in my report, but um, one of them that we can look at right now it was conducted by Hen Len Chung and Lauren Steinberg. Um, and in their study, they, con they examined the relations among neighborhood structural and social characteristics parenting practices, peer group affiliations, and delinquency among a group of serious adolescent offenders. To also add on, the sample size of that group was um, the ages between 14 and 18. Um, there was 400, the number of kids that was in that study was 488, and it was composed primarily of economically disadvantaged ethnic minority youth living in urban communities in Chicago. Um, they came up with three conclusions. The first one is that neighborhood structural disadvantages is related to youth perceptions of disorganization in the community. Specifically, concentrated poverty is associated with more neighborhood disorder. Residential instability is associated with less neighborhood social cohesion. The second um, conclusion that they found was neighborhood disorder ineffective parenting and youth involvement with deviant peers are all associated with youth reporting higher rates of offending. And the last one is although community factors account for a small portion of the overall variance in juvenile offending, 
Lower levels of neighborhood and social organization are indirectly related to levels of adolescent offending via their links to parenting practices and peer affiliations. So some of the models used in the research was the social cognitive, cognitive gen, yeah, model type. Um, it's a type of social influence, a person that copies another individual either in their vicinity or have been exposed to. Uh, deprivation model, explanation of prison subculture that suggests norms, languages, roles, and traditions are developed in prison to help prisoners adjust to the pain of imprisonment. So you take that on the outside and it's having people that were inside prison basically feeding off what they learned and their bad influences onto you. So another study that was conducted, or I should say um, model that was used was by Lenenthal and Brooks and Gunn. Brooks Gunn, I should say, described a collective socialization model, which suggests that neighborhood influences children and adolescents through community social organization control and collective efficiency, including the presence of adult role models and social control agents who, in addition to structuring routines and opportunities in the neighborhood, supervise and monitor children and adolescents in the neighborhood. So that's what I was getting at before when there's, with the deprivation model. So, so with that also, it's like another peer or parental guidance point of view as well because if the parent's not home or the kids all by themselves they learn off of a parental figure in their low-income neighborhood or communities that in turn help them kind of with the crime life and they start off young as a result so in conclusion Neighborhood influences are caused by gain involvement, parental guidance, low-income communities, and age as well. To go further, these influences also affect one's relationship with their family, friends, and community, but also their future as a whole. Because if you start young, that's all you know. You're going you're gonna to be in and out of jail. Rehabilitation may not work for you. It may, but um, many different resources that you can go to. Um, include community centers, uh, counselors, and better influences. Um, go to your counselor at school, tell them you're having this type of problem. So, and overall, I'll help you at the end because better influ influences will help change the view of crime towards youth individuals as a result. So that is my presentation. Um, hope you guys enjoy it.